Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today is the first day of our road trip down to Moab and Utah, all the national parks. We were driving already for a couple hours and we just crossed the border in Montana, as you see behind me, and the border in the back of us here. Uh, we crossed in Karsten and uh, I'm planning to get out uh, all the way to Idaho today, maybe a little bit further, a little over a thousand kilometers. We have a big goal to get to Moab uh, tomorrow, so today I want to push as far as I can, so maybe a thousand, maybe even more kilometers. Let's hope it's gonna be a great time and a good vacation, so the wife and daughter is gonna see the, all the national parks in Utah. Zion, Canyonlands and so on. I didn't film much on the way here because I don't think there was a point. If you want to see that I have it on my other video from last year when I was uh, traveling through there on a motorcycle. So native people on the horses, just a little sculptures made out of metal and our new little trailer with a bag of hike 171 DB if you are interested on this thing, I made a review a while back. Let's enjoy this trip and have a great time. All right, guys, almost a thousand kilometers later, there was nothing to film because it was raining for quite some time when we went through Montana. And now we made it to Idaho. And uh, we are close to the craters of the moon. And uh, that's where the lava is, uh, the old volcanic lava. Um, last year in the video I made it also, uh, we went right to the main source where it's all started. But here it's just uh, quite far out, uh, but there's still right there, all the volcanic rock. So it's, it's a pretty unusual geology, as you can see, even the uh, trees and everything looks different and right on this side behind me there is a huge lava rocks right there there's my wifey catching up there's the lava rock and Nusha posing another thing that we had to accomplish in Idaho Falls uh, stop to chow at Chick-fil-a something that my daughter came up with from her YouTube videos. I didn't even know nothing about it. Well, again, I'm not into that stuff. My cup of tea is motorcycles and scuba diving, not checking out the Chick-fil-A. There's the whole lava view from the top of that short hike. It just uh, stop at the rust area. And as you can see, it's all around and it goes for miles actually, like probably about 200 miles west from us here. Since the last stop yesterday on those lava rocks, uh, we drove for another two hours and we are literally just a few minutes away from uh, Utah border. I wasn't really tired to drive more, but uh, I did like uh, almost 1200 kilometers yesterday and uh, I decided uh, that it's time to pull over because later it might be harder to find something to sleep. And the first night we spent at the truck stop, uh, Maverick, just in a small town. I don't even know what the, what the name of, of it is, I don't remember. But not bad, it's a good location, it's free. The parking lot is pretty much empty, so we spent the night here. And uh, now we have another five and a half hours maybe to get down to Moab. The truck is approaching, so that's gonna be quite no noisy. Just behind me there beauty of owning a little RV saves the day. You can camp pretty much anywhere. I slept before even in the rest areas and stuff like that. The one key feature is uh, if you're traveling, make sure uh, you give a right of way to truckers. Make sure there's a lot of parking spots. Or if you are camping at the truck stop, certain truck stops are RV friendly, like this one here, for example. I, I tell you that because I used to drive a truck for a living almost uh, seven, eight years, I would say. 
so I'm pretty familiar but uh, the key is always always make sure that there is a lot of room for truckers because truckers have a priority when uh, when you're pulling into those areas they have a limit of hours how many hours they can drive per day it's not that they sometimes they will even drive more but they limit it to the log books so that's very important that they have a place to stay you don't want to block their space space because they gotta pull over and sometimes they are tired because even though they're logging most of the time different hours but they drive way longer in order to log those hours that's uh, very important so yeah we just had a quick breakfast everything is on board and then now we're just gonna start heading towards utah hopefully i'm gonna be able to pull over uh, by the utah sign nice blue skies a little bit well blue skies with uh, some clouds but uh, still beautiful day nice and warm it's getting warmer as we are getting closer to utah Love that little trailer that we bought it's really really compact it's not hard to pull it serves serves us well so far it's just just the second season on it we just bought it last year so it's got perfect you know just enough room for three of us to sleep yeah we have everything here what we need pretty much right so beats the dirty motel I'm hoping to get an actual campsite uh, maybe in Moab. My daughter would have access maybe to the pool because there's a nice camping in Moab and there's some spots available. I didn't even book it. I'm just gonna go and see if I can get there without uh, reservations. Uh, I hate doing reservations and wasting fees if I can pull in. If not, I'll stop somewhere off grid camping. There's a lot of room for that as well. We are just crossing the border into Utah, just left the, our sleeping area and we just made it about six miles down the road and there we go, sign of Utah, here we come. Five more hours and we are in Moab. So time to carry on. Another stop in Green River. We have about 90 kilometers to go to Moab at this point. Another pit stop for burger and a bite to eat before we get into town. Oh, that's a, that's a propane bottle. And uh, my daughter, of course, she spotted that watermelon propane tank. So she wants to have a photo with that. Well, right now we're back on I-70 for a bit from highway number six. And next thing, next stop is gonna be Moab itself. naked but yeah we made it to Moab and we managed to find a campsite right in Moab downtown and I just barely unhooked the trailer and my daughter is having a heat stroke and she has to go to the pool not an actual heat stroke just tantrum we are at uh, Sun, uh, Sun Outdoors in Moab, that's the campground name. It's $160 for two nights, so it is quite pricey, but uh, that's what you pay uh, when you want to travel and have fun. And uh, yeah, the location is good, it's close to everything, what we need to do tomorrow. Because uh, tomorrow, first thing we're gonna do is head out to Arches National Park. And that's the view of the pool. And, uh, After the nice cooling off in the pool, now it's time to head out on town. The wife is getting ready, the daughter is ready. We all nicely showered after two days of driving out here and ready to explore Utah and national parks. The campground is getting crowded. There's only four spots available. Uh, there was four spots available 
when we got here, but there was a couple of vehicles already that came in, and the daughter <laughs> is already on the tree. <laughs> Look at dressed up in dress and sitting on a tree like a monkey. the walk down on Moab through downtown it's time to make some chow time to eat some real food instead of all the junk that we buy on the road pork chops and Mexican rice the wife is making try to make a video 6 20 in the morning we're getting into Arches National Park Climbing up. Like a light lighting up in the dark You make it right, I forgot how to act It's so classic Every time you make me nervous and I lose my words It's been a while since I forgot the most simple words National Park. Now I know why you never worked out before. I know it would always turn out bad, so bad. But every time we start a fight, we always stop in time. We both know how to be gentle, never cross the line. sand dune arch don't know how far but we're going to check it out we have all day to do two parks arches and canyon lands <laughs>
a broken arch. A broken arch. Sand there's a broken arch and there's a sand dune arch. Can we go to the sand dune? Ooh, look at that. Just normal nevay. There's an exit. Viens take cash. So now we are on our way to see a tunnel arch and then landscape arch. That's uh, one of the biggest pieces out here. There's a pine tunnel and then tree arch, tunnel arch. Which way are we going? This one first. Because I didn't even stop here last time. Oh, there's the, ar the tunnel arch.
part two of our day. We made it to Canyonlands and Island of the Sky to discover the first stop. My wife is in the visitor center checking out what's going on and the plan is to go down the Potash Shafa road from here back to Moab. Now it's time to check out Mesa Arch. That's a stop number three. We passed some that are less important. The heat is killing and that's why they make the t-shirts. I survived Moab. Lots of in and out of the car. That is the most tiring part of this trip. And as any sightseeing trip, if you want to see as much as you can, that's what happens. So we made it to the Grand Viewpoint area, one of the end stops. I'm not sure how much more there is in front of us, but I don't think there's too much. The view will be coming up shortly. What a view. 
little of a little bit of breeze that's nice you can see how far down that goes it, you can't even picture it <laughs> sort of they have to breathe they have to eat look at that one how green that is that little plant so we're just descending down on Shaffer trail f-150 hard at work off the brakes a little bit they got a bit warm almost made it through Schaffer and Potash Road there's the Potash ponds right behind us um, the Potash mining or however you want to call it the Sun is setting slowly and according to the GPS we still have another 41 kilometers to go but it's not everything like this because here it's like wow it's beyond my daughter was quite scared when we were going through those switchbacks and uh, the truck is almost like tipping in some sections <laughs> we made it almost made it i shouldn't say it yet but we almost made it So it's a fourth day of the family trip we just left Moab pretty late uh, because we had a checkout at 11 o'clock so there was no rush at whatsoever and uh, my daughter wanted of course to have a t-shirt from uh, Moab and uh, today we will be trying to get to the Monument Valley but just outside of Moab uh, we just stopped so the wife and daughter can see the hole in a rock which uh, I went already uh, like a couple of years ago uh, so that's why I didn't go on that tour there was no point for me 
but for them it's gonna take the tour takes only about uh, 15 minutes so it's not a long tour but it's worth to see a man made a house pretty much inside that big rock behind me so uh, he carved in there by hand pretty much by pretty much most of it was hand tools he all kinds of rooms kitchen everything like the house was pretty much fully sufficient and what's cool about it that he doesn't have to use in there he didn't have to use in there any heat or AC because the temperature stays the same pretty much throughout the whole year uh, so that was very efficient it is quite interesting if you're ever out here in Moab and you want to see it it's uh, worthwhile to visit this place the reason why you didn't go because you still cannot go and film inside they have no, no camera restrictions uh, so no photos no video inside so that's why i didn't even bother going in there and i believe you could you can find some stuff on the internet if you really want to see what it is all about other than that there's a couple only attractions here like a trading post with the souvenirs and petting zoo right behind me and that cool truck uh, that's made out of uh, all kinds of gadgets tools chains uh, gears and so on i'll show you that in a second so that's the jeep and if you have a close look here, what kind of stuff, uh, wrenches and so on, the pliers, very creative, even the scissors, hinges, that's a serious pit bull. That's the front grill. That thing may, must weigh a lot. Another stop just uh, on the way towards uh, Monument Valley shortly after the hole in the rock we have arrived at Twin Rocks uh, which I discovered also while I was traveling on a motorcycle I wanted to show this to my wife and daughter so they can see that it's uh, pretty unique uh, just off the highway nothing really far now we will continue on our way towards uh, Monument Valley that's the whole idea today uh, not sure how long they're open uh, we always eyeballing and we don't have any reservations or nothing hoping that we will get there with no problem site is a Mexican hot rock just behind me just three miles north of Mexican Hat town so we were here last year again on motorcycles and camping just behind on the other side on the river in a native uh, campground reservations have to be made online here just a quick photo and we'll carry it on So we 
just left Mexican Hat and we, we are approaching Monument Valley just behind me on the horizon. It's uh, first sight of it. We finally arrived at Monument Valley, Navajo First Nation land. Just to take a closer look at the main sculptures that are just in front of us here. I shouldn't say sculptures because they call them monuments. And it is eight bucks per person to get in here. Uh, you can unhook the trailer and go for a ride down the road and get closer. We're not gonna do that. Uh, last time when I was here, uh, they didn't let us in uh, on the motorcycles. Uh, yeah, and I asked now why. Uh, they, they, they just told me that, that they don't let in motorcycles in, but the cars and uh, 4x4s are okay. And there we go. All that just to see that. But this is major, because you can see that in most of the Western movies back in the days on a Marlboro, uh, billboards and commercials it is beautiful that's for sure After visiting Monument Valley, we didn't go much further, uh, another uh, 40 minutes maybe, not even, between 30 and 40 minutes. Uh, and we have arrived uh, for a night because it's like after 5.30 at this moment. So we figure we have, we will stop here. Where we are is a Goosenecks State Park. As you see, not a single tree anywhere as you eyes can see, but the view up ahead uh, just in the valley there it's amazing and the beauty part of that is also that it is how oh, I think I got bitten by a wasp or something it is only ten dollars so well worth it a park entrance and a night here not many people as you see not crowded at all and worthwhile the view so this is the view this is the reason why you call it a gooseneck state state park there's a river right below. It's kind of low when I was here three years ago. The river was much higher and I could even see people on the rafts. Uh, not this time, but in the distance right there, that's where we came from. That's a Monument Valley. And to the left of us, that's a Colorado River on that side, uh, but behind that canyon there. And a Mexican hat uh, also. I'm pretty sure that the video here doesn't justify the height of it, but you can see all these layers, how far down that goes. And then there's a big drop off right at the end of it. There is a reason why I didn't disconnect the truck and camper. I wanted to have a peace of mind that it stays secure overnight, especially that we're so close to that ledge at the back. It's all leveled and good to go, but it's still secure to the truck. If we're gonna go, it's all gonna go, not just the trailer. <laughs> so today, tonight we'll be cooking some chicken breast and rice.
we're beginning at day five of our family trip to Utah just left Gooseneck State Park and the plan was to go to Natural Bridges but the Google Maps took us to Moki Dagway Highway and that's a mission impossible well it is possible but I don't want to risk it with the trailer to go on the switchbacks uh, of this uh, narrow roads uh, up to the canyon that's a big shortcut to get there so at this point I'm not even sure if we're gonna be able to go to the natural bridges or not I have to stop in a bit uh, look on the map again and see where we can uh, how we can get there another way uh, one way or the other we have to go back about uh, 150 kilometers or so uh, to where we came from yesterday and from there we were planned to go towards Bryce uh, Capitol Reef and Grand Staircase Escalante before we hit Zion so that's the plan for today another day probably full of adventures So we just entering natural bridges. Uh, we had to go around, as I mentioned earlier. We lost probably about an hour instead of uh, 30 minutes to cut through the Mokidagwe Highway. But it better be safe than sorry. And there we are at the natural bridges. Welcome uh, sign. And, and uh, just a couple miles down the road, there is a uh, there is a pay booth. I don't remember what was the fee, but uh, it should be probably not more than 10 bucks to get in. I have to make a correction because I said it's a state park, but it's not a state park, it's a national park actually. I was under the impression it's a state park. That's a Sipapu bridge. Just zooming in here on my left side. It's not really visible because it's right in there. Kind of hard to see where is there more red of a rock. My daughter is picking the rocks here, of course. Something has to happen. And yeah, so that's a view in the second viewing area in Natural Bridges National Park. That was one of the first state parks in Utah. entering a Kuhina Bridge viewpoint. That's a paved trail to overlook of 600 feet elevation uh, and the trail bridge is 1.2 kilometers. 
totally different sceneries than what we've seen up to this point so far. This is one of the last stops. It kind of blends in. It's hard to see. It's our Awahamo Bridge, and you can see it right there. Hope it's gonna show on the camera, but it's, uh, it might not. So, because the trees are in the background, and then you can see the bridge right on top, actually in there. There is a there is a walkway down. You can get there closer if you want to. I think it. I'll bring it closer right here so that, that I'm following right in the center of the screen. That's where the bridge is. Our daughter sits in the truck so we don't want to go down. She's uh, not enjoying this. So there's actually people coming back from there. We're crossing Colorado River and Glen Canyon. It's like a totally different planet. I said that before and I say it again, because this is not normal. Those sceneries, what we can see here, third time in this area and still amazed by every little bit of this beautiful state of Utah only if the heat would be more acceptable right now uh, I don't even know what the temperature is I can actually have a look it says 25 degrees but I don't think it's 25 I think it's way hotter I would say it's like way over 30 degrees unless the phone doesn't have a reception and it's they keeping the last update uh, that I had a service on because here for most part I'm not getting any service on the road but yeah so Colorado River just behind me crossing the road
we are entering now the Capital Reef National Park for a little bit before we head to Bryce and um, we might be looking for something uh, on the way to pull over for the night because it is 3 o'clock right now it's plus 36 degrees Celsius super hot you can cook eggs on any of those rocks it's ridiculous and uh, maybe we'll find some decent campsite uh, with some uh, hookups and stuff I don't know we also have to find a bite to eat because we've been driving for quite some time already since this morning we left around quarter to nine and there's nothing nothing between the Mexican hut and here that you could stop and uh, grab a bite to eat but anyways the scenery is on the way here they're just outstanding out of this world it's changing every few kilometers like it changes so often so yeah let's keep on going and see how it goes for the rest of the day So we are at Capitol Reef National Monument in a Grand Wash area walking through the ancient riverbed with some different sceneries that we encountered from the road 
So we left the trailer at our campsite, Thousand Lakes RV Resort, just in Torrey. Uh, we spent the night there after yesterday. I didn't film much because it was getting late. Uh, we had to set up, but this morning we left the trailer on the site and carrying on to discover a little bit of the Capitol Reef National Monument. We are leaving Capitol Reef National Park, going to get the trailer from our campsite at Thousand Lakes RV and from there we'll be heading towards Bryce National Park. That's the goal to get there today, may not be all the way to the actual park because we may want to look for a campsite beforehand but we'll see how far we'll get. So right now we are riding through Grand Staircases, Calante. We were not able to pull up before, be, uh, before the sign because there was a steep grade and no pavement and they put a sign in a kind of crappy location. But uh, right here we're on top of the canyon. One side is the drop off and then on the other side is another drop off. So we're riding right on the top of the ridge of the canyon. I'll show you the other side in a moment. That's the other side of the canyon.
Good morning. Well, last night we have pulled in to Ruby's campground in Bryce National Park and we have spent the night here. Today the plan is to head out to Bryce and explore the sites uh, around the area and from there we will be heading out to Zion National Park. So the campground was uh, actually quite full, uh, the actual campground, and it is right behind me across that pond, which you can see in the background. So they put us on an overflow area, luckily. So we still managed to get a full hookup right here. So we were able to spend the night and it's uh, actually quite big of a campground. You also have here quite a few uh, motels and a best western right on the other side. The campsite here for a night was 58 uh, US dollars uh, that's with the full hookup and uh, the campsite also offers a pool area and a playground. I stayed on this campground uh, about three years ago when I was on a motorcycles with, the, with my friends but I was hoping to get to the main one, but unfortunately that was not the case. Uh, we are lucky enough that uh, we still were able to camp out here. It offers also a convenience store and a lot of souvenirs if you're looking for something to grab from this beautiful location. So we already had the breakfast, now all I have to do is pack up the trailer and head out do the, some more sightseeing so we will see you guys on the road again and just gonna wrap up everything here Yes, that's a Bryce Canyon, the beautiful and spectacular. Just uh, we are at almost noon, so we don't have the perfect sun because it's right above us right now almost. So that creates a bit of a problem with the pictures and all. But still, what the eyes can see, it's totally different than what you can see through the lens of this camera. So I'm just entering the sunrise point and uh, that will be the first stop of this location and then we continue to the next one to see what else Bryce Canyon has to offer for us but so far very impressive very impressive
So now we are exploring the Bryce Point area. down the Bryce point and that's the viewpoint I'll bring that closer nature is amazing So we just entered Zion National Park. We might have a problem to do more pullovers here, so I will film with the other camera from the track because it's a busy day. It's uh, Independence Day here in the uh, United States today, 4th of July and my birthday. My wife is celebrating the Independence Day. So we'll take a few photos here and ride through the canyon.
touching it. Yeah. I'm touching it. Which is, I don't want to do it too much. The trip to Utah National Park is almost done. Uh, we just got out of uh, Zion National Park and now we are heading towards Las Vegas. We are about uh, two and a half hours north of Las Vegas. So we will try to get through Las Vegas today, possibly find some RV resort somewhere, if it's possible at all, I'm not sure. Uh, I always take that gamble, but the Utah National Parks were just stunning. Uh, amazing scenery right through. Uh, the eyes are just going in every direction. Today is my birthday, 4th of July, and uh, we just went for a nice supper pizza place out here, just about eight miles west of St. George. So from here, we're just hitting the highway I-15s, uh, continue south towards uh, Las Vegas.